Hey, hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D here. Of course, you know where I'm at in the comfort of my mobile, which is my altar away from church on my own place. So I get away and drink my Bustelo coffee and I talk to God. I listen. God speaks to me. He put a song in my heart. We used to sing this in church years ago. It goes, uh, <laughs> Oh, well, oh, well, oh, I'm so glad, don't you know, that Jesus set me free. Oh, what you said? I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Come on and tell it now. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. A singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus Jesus set me free. <laughs> There's more to it, but I remember that song. We used to, we used to love it. Oh, praise God. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Inner healing, being free from the issue, subject, the grips. You want to call it a spirit, an attitude, a behavior of the lack of unforgiveness. Walking in unforgiveness. We are called to walk in forgiveness. God wants you and I to be free from the spirit, the attitude, the behavior, the issues of unforgiveness. I know people have done things to you. And maybe these things are terrible, horrible. But man, in Christ, only in Christ, not in Dr. Phil that can give you a thrill, not in Oprah or any other psychologist or any other philosopher, only in the person of Jesus can you and I get the strength to find unforgiveness in our hearts and forgive those that have offended us. I've had to forgive people. I've had to ask for forgiveness throughout my walk with the Lord. And even before that, you know, the 12 step self help groups like AA Alcohol Anonymous or NA Narcotics Anonymous. And there's other groups, self help 12 step groups. They teach that we should make restitution if we can. In other words, if you stole from someone, if you've offended from someone, if you cheated on someone, if you can make restitution, go back and apologize and try to make it right. That's one of the steps to getting yourself free and getting your life together. Well, Jesus spoke about that too. Jesus spoke about it before anybody else did. He talked about if you have sinned against someone, or a brother have sinned against you, correct them, rebuke them in love, confront them. And if they repent, forgive them. That you'll find in Luke chapter 17. If they repent, forgive them, correct them, and then reconcile with them. Because we're a family and God is our father. Jesus is the head of the body of Christ, the the head of the church, and he wants us to walk healed in a healing, in forgiveness, and in love. It's not always easy. We're putting all kinds of people in there together from different backgrounds, different views, different appetites in life, different walks of life, and we are to walk together and work together and live together as a family, and we can do it. But we have to follow the instructions of the master. So he said, if your brother offend you or you offended him, reconcile. Go there. Humble yourself. Apologize. Ask for forgiveness. And if they repent, forgive them and reconcile. That's what he taught. And that's what we have to continue to practice, you know. And also in Mark, or Matthews, I should say, chapter 5, if I remember correctly, Matthew chapter 5, it talks about if you're going to go pray, leave your gift at the altar. Your gift is your praise, your worship. Your gift is when you're sending up a sweet smelling aroma, a fragrance before God in worship and in praise. He said, don't do that. Leave it there. Go to your brother. You have to make a text 
a phone call if they're right there. Listen, man, I want to apologize to you because uh, yesterday or last week or a little while ago, I offended you, man. I said some things I shouldn't have said, and I want to apologize to you and seek out their forgiveness. And if they don't, you know, that was offensive, man. I, I don't know if I can forgive you. Listen, you did your job. Your job's to go and apologize to them. You go, your job's to go and reconcile. And then go back and finish your gift giving to God. You see, because we could be hypocrites. We could offend someone knowing we offended them, cut them up and give them a piece of our, boom, bang, our mouth, our words, and then go there and pray, Father, I love you. God looks at that and says, wait a minute, man. You know, you just offended someone that you can see. And you're going to come tell me you love me that you can't see? He says, no, go go fix it up. And then come back and offer your offering. And that's beautiful when you feel free. I want to check my heart. I want to know that I'm free from offending anyone, from hurting anyone that I've done in the past. And so I want to apologize so I can freely say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's more important to me. My God, I love you. Then walking in pride because I can't tell someone I'm sorry and I offended you because I'm too prideful. But I don't want that getting in the way of me saying, Jesus, I love you, Lord. I worship you. And I want to send my aroma of this sweet smelling aroma, my incest, my praise, my give to the Lord without anything blocking it or getting in its way. So Jesus said, before you come to the altar and bring your gift, go right Reconcile. Fix it up with someone. Get it together, man. Don't walk around in unforgiveness. Don't walk around holding a grudge. Don't walk around angry at someone. Don't walk, walk around bitter at someone, resentful towards someone. Don't walk around with vengeance. I'm going to get them for what they did. Don't walk around with a grudge. You got a grudge in your face. You know what happens when you live like that? You start to look like that. You start to look like a grudge, whatever a grudge looks like. You start to look mean. It starts to bring wrinkles to your face because you've been holding on to that for years. <sighs> you may not even know it. You may say, oh, I'm getting old. No, it's not. It's that brush you got. It's, it's pasted right down your face. <sighs> it's that bitterness you got. It's in your heart. You're walking around bitter. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, brother. And you're full of bitterness, man. <laughs> You're full of anger. You got revenge. Somebody did something to you, to your family member, and you're like, oh, I'm going to get you. I want revenge. You know? <laughs> Let's don't do that to yourself, man. Let, let, set yourself free. Set yourself free. Excuse me. Set yourself free. You're walking around with anger and unforgiveness and bitterness, man, because somebody did something to you. Jesus said it, man. He said, listen, if you're going to forgive your father will forgive you. If you don't forgive, your heavenly father won't forgive you. That's a strong word. Those are strong words. You may want to take that up with Jesus. Hold up, Jesus. Hold up a minute. You're saying to me that if I don't forgive uh, Billy the kid over here, you're not going to forgive me? That's what he said. Yep, exactly what he said. So you have a choice. You can forgive, and then you'll be forgiven. I love to walk in forgiveness. I just love walking in forgiveness. It's just a good thing, man. I'm, I've been forgiven. Praise God. I've forgiven others. But if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. That's what Jesus said. So instead of walking around with all that stuff in your heart, unforgiveness and grudge and attitude, learn to forgive your brother, your sister. Learn to let that go. You know that the Holy Spirit is very sensitive the Holy Spirit could be grieved. The Holy Spirit could be quenched. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's not a power. He's not a force. He's not a tongue. He's not goosebumps. He's not a shake. He is a person, and he could be grieved. And if you offend him, you can turn him off. And unforgiveness is one of them. He's so sensitive that he will show you. Listen, you offended that brother or that sister. Maybe with words, maybe with deeds, maybe you promised to do something, you didn't come through, you broke your promise, you broke your word, you uh, espouse, they offend each other, and they live without communicating, 
for days, the silent treatment, they offended each other, they're angry at each other, the children are angry at their parents, the parents with their children, you're angry at the system, you're angry at police officers, they ever did nothing to you, but you're just angry at them, you're angry at everybody, and you're walking around full of anger in your heart, and Jesus said it, man, he says, you gotta let that go. The Holy Spirit is sensitive. He wants you to let that go because he wants you to be a channel of God's blessing. He wants you to be a channel of God's anointing. He wants you to be a channel of God's spirit to walk and work on the overflow of the Holy Spirit with the gifts and operation and the talents and the fruits of the spirit. He wants you to walk in love and patience and joy and peace and forgiveness forgiveness uh, and for that you have to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and hear his voice and if he tells you to go and reconcile and ask for forgiveness and humble yourself man put your pride aside and do that and God will lift you up he'll bless you so remember that, leave your gift at the altar before you go pray. Before you go up there and pray up a storm and speak in tongues. And meanwhile, you you got a grudge against somebody. You hate somebody. You dislike them. You're bitter. You, you want vengeance. You haven't forgiven them. Yeah, it's right there. The Holy Spirit will show you. You need to go reconcile with that person. And you need to come back then and make the uh, gift offering that you have. And if somebody re offended you, reconcile. They need to forgive. They need to ask for forgiveness and forgive them. He said, you know, I forgive you, man. It's okay. Come here, man. And uh, reconcile. You don't have to go walk around with them drinking coffee, tea, and cookies. But, you know, you, you're at peace. You can keep them at distance because, uh, you know, you may not want to take any more chances with them. But you're at peace with them. Praise God. And then, of course, uh, when you repent. And you ask for forgiveness. Don't make no excuses. I hear a lot of people. P. I'm talking about Christians been around since uh, since Adam and Eve, and uh, <clears throat> they make excuses here. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, but it was because you know keep your butt out of it and just ask for forgiveness. It's not if I offended you. You know you did. So it's not if I offended. I did offend you, and you can't make excuses. Well, it was because. Well, if you hadn't, well, you did it. Well, you started. Listen, just fess up. Listen, I offended you. Not if, but I did. And I'm sorry. I apologize. Then make it from your heart. Don't give lip service. Yeah, well, no. Uh, I'm sorry, all right? Not like that. Mean it. <laughs> I want God to forgive me. Right, listen, come over here, man. I was wrong, man. No, I told right. No, it's not all right. I forget. I, I want to repent. I want you to forgive me for real. I'm sorry, man. That that. Listen, I I humble myself. I'm sorry, man. And there's no excuses. I, I was just wrong. Period. Not because not you did it or some. Not the weather. I was just wrong, and I did it, and I'm sorry. <laughs> listen, I've had a lot of people in the past. I'll let you go with this. That have done me wrong. I've done wrong. And I've repented and asked for forgiveness, God and from men. But there's some people that have done me wrong. I mean, they backstab me. They try to slit my throat. <laughs> These people I sat down and ate with, I laughed with. And they just went, whip whop. I forgive them. Hey, forgiven. We don't hang out anymore like we used to. We don't have dinner anymore because I have to just watch my back all the time. Where's the knife coming from? But I forgave them. And I've walked on. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you to do the same thing, man. Don't be too prideful. Don't be too superior. Humble yourself before God. And if someone's offended you, go to them. Talk about it. Repent. Accept the apology. And embrace the friendship. And love one another. And forgive each other. Just like your heavenly father forgave you, right? Remember when you were running around doing your thing? You weren't always safe, right? You didn't come out of your mother's womb and say, I'm born again. No, you were a sinner. And then Jesus saved you and he forgave you. Yeah, you. Same way you ought to forgive others. Don't forget that. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the spirit of forgiveness that we walk in it, Lord. That we walk in love and unity and let go of the bitterness, the grudge, the anger, the frustration, the unforgiveness. And that we walk forgiving one another and loving one another. For the name of Jesus' sake, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. Will you forgive me a minute, man? I'm going to put on my shades and have me a 
sip of this coffee. Just give me a minute. My Baya! Woo! You can't drink Bustelo coffee without making some type of pop, 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 sound. <laughs> God bless you, man. Take care of yourself. I love you, man. Mm -mm 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 -mm.